I commend this bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr. Speaker. Andrew William, uh, Andrew Little. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My apologies. Uh, no, 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 no offence taken. Uh, I'm. I'm flattered, I'm flattered to have been confused with such an honourable member. Uh, uh, Mr Speaker, that speech from the Minister confirms that this government's uh, changes in the justice sector are about cost-cutting and far from promoting justice are about denying access to justice. There is a principle that lies at the heart of any justice system and that is access, access to justice. And the access to justice, if it is to be of any use at all, must be equal. No system of justice, or there is no system of justice if it is confined to the rich and the powerful. And so legal aid plays a very important role in what any government does in the area of legal assistance and legal aid is very important. The exercise by the state of its coercive powers, whether through the police or other prosecuting agencies, or indeed simply bringing people before the state-funded courts, must uh, in doing so, must make sure that those who are brought before the courts have a reasonable chance of getting good representation and having their interests heard, and particularly when there is a, a risk or a chance or a threat that they may be, their liberties may be uh, uh, denied and they may be detained, then it is even more important that they have access to legal advice and representation. And so state assistance to low-income people, to the poor, to the impecunious, as it is often described, whether in criminal matters or in, in, uh, if they are parties to a civil matter, is absolutely essential. Without it, without legal aid, without legal assistance, we have a justice system for the rich, and that will never do in a liberal democracy such as ours. So the Legal Services Act 2011, which is the primary piece of legislation in this whole matter, states as its purpose to promote access to justice by, amongst other things, providing legal services to people of insufficient means. Providing legal services to people of insufficient means. So this government has embarked on, or at least in this case, did embark on radical change to legal aid following the, Bas the Beasley report. So the Beasley report. Now that, it's when you talk to the legal profession, you find differing views about that report, the merits of it, the basis of it, the evidence that was used to support the changes that were recommended in it. But there is no doubt in my mind, and the Minister has confirmed it in her speech just now, the real concern isn't about the quality of justice or the quality of representation, it's about the cost to the state of ensuring that that is provided. Now, we all understand that the, uh, the state's coffers are not bottomless, but the principle of justice and access to justice is one that must sit very high in the priorities of any government to support the people. There must be a, um, we must make it a priority to make sure that people are adequately supported and therefore adequately represented. The Baisley report also talked about a concern about quality uh, and and Dame Margaret Baisley raised the question about what she described as the long-term viability and therefore the sustainability of the system. She claimed there was abuse of the legal aid system. Well, sir, I've read the report and I fail to see what the real evidence of abuse was. But let's assume that there were some lawyers who were not up to scratch who were claiming legal aid for not doing a very good job. There was very small a number very small in number, and Mr Williamson may well have observed some himself. I don't know. There may well have been some. But let's have a look at the consequences of the administrative changes made to the legal aid system to date. We are seeing good lawyers now refusing to do legal aid because rates have been cut, the hours available to do particular work have been cut, and those lawyers, good lawyers, lawyers with a strong track record, and I was talking to some just the other night in Auckland, former police officers turned lawyers who know criminal justice, know the other side, know what good quality and adequate representation looks like, they can no longer make it work for them. There are a growing number of lawyers who are no longer doing legal aid because they cannot make it work. And who is suffering as a consequence of that? Not them, because they will find other work. And they will find the fee-paying clients who will use them, 
and they will go into a, well, they might have gone into family at once upon a time. They may not even go into that when this government's finished with that area. But they will go into other areas of work. But defendants, those who have been arrested, those who are facing prosecution and who are impecunious, they are the ones who miss out. They don't get the voice in court that a proper liberal democracy requires them to get. And if this bill is about making positive changes and improvements to the legal aid, legal aid system, it won't do it. It simply won't do it. Now, some of the more insidious changes that appeared in the original bill that came to this House in the last Parliament have been removed as a result of the work of the Select Committee and indeed of the Minister's SOP. But the underlying principles that have driven the change have not. The desire to cut costs for the sake of cutting costs, not for the sake of improving representation. The further, there was a, uh, an argument given, or reason given, for why this bill has been so delayed, and that is because the government can get on with its family court reform. And that is turning into a complete shambles now, because having sort of run at family court reform like a bull in a china shop and said, we're going to make all these changes, we're going to withdraw the rights to legal representation, we're going to take lawyers off, off children, uh, independent legal represent representation of children, now the Minister a couple of weeks ago says, oh, no, we've got that wrong, we're going to have to change that. But we still don't know what the change is. And a piece of court reform, the family court reform, that was about reducing, at least on, on, on one part, the cost of legal aid, we now don't, don't know what, what the impact that's going to have. So we simply don't know whether there's going to be a saving in legal aid or not at all. But this bill doesn't change its underlying premise, which is simply about cutting costs simply about cutting cost. There are still problems with this bill. There are still problems with this bill. The first one, it leaves in place barriers to legal aid and legal representation when people need it most. One of the provisions that it leaves in place is that if you have already been legally aided and you are required to repay your legal aid and you are behind in your payments and you then face another court hearing that would otherwise entitle you to legal aid, you may not get it because you're behind in your payments for your last matter. Now, that is not justice. Impecunious people often find it difficult to repay, their, uh, to uh, meet their financial obligations. That is the nature of being poor. That is the nature of poverty. And when it comes to the administration of justice, when it comes to appearing before the court, facing a prosecution, we should not deprive people of proper representation because they have an outstanding obligation to the state for another matter. That is wrong, that is unjust, and we are opposed to the bill for that reason. The second one, user fees. This bill introduces a user fee for those who are legally aided. It is, it is absolutely bizarre. Why, when you are dealing with the poorest in our community and the most impecunious, would you then, on the basis of providing state assistance, then say, now you're going to have to pay a fee as well. It may only be $50, but $50 for somebody who cannot make ends meet is $50 too much. $50 they can't afford. And then there is the third aspect, which is charging interest to the legally aided on amounts outstanding. Legal aid was never a banking system. It wasn't about an overdraft and, 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 and making a loan from a bank. It was about providing assistance at a crucial time in your life when you need it most. The general direction this government is taking in justice is wrong. It is about cost-cutting. The courts are in uproar because of the cuts in the courts. The Crown solicitors uh, around the country are in uproar because their fees and their budgets are being cut. The court staff are under stress. The family court staff in Auckland know that what they're operating now is a complete shambles and they cannot make it work. Everything this government is doing in justice is wrong and bad for people. And this is just another measure this government is doing. We are opposed to it. It won't help people who need it most, and it will be bad for the justice system. Scott Simpson. Mr Speaker, as uh, Chairman...